আসসালামু আলাইকুম फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू डे 5 অফ এফএম রিভিশন ক্লাস কোর্স টুডে দ্য টপিক ইজ ডিভিডেন্ড ডিসিশন আর্লি ওয়ি হ্যাভ ফিনিশড দ্য ফাইনান্সিং ডিসিশন এন্ড নাও উইল বি মুভিং টু ডিভিডেন্ড ডিসিশন ইউ ক্যান সি ওয়াচ মাই ডে 1 টু ডে 4 ইন দ্য প্লেলিস্ট এফএম রিভিশন ক্লাস কোর্স এন্ড দিস উইল বি অ্যাডেড অল মাই এফএম রিভিশন ক্লাস ভিডিওস উইল বি আন্ডার দ্যাট প্লেলিস্ট okay so you can get all the videos in one playlist now we are going to focus on past exam history the clientel theory practical influences on dividend policy dividend capacity questions on dividend policy and dividend capacity you need to be very careful because this is an area that can be tested okay that has been tested also in the past then dividend policy in practice share buyback schemes dividend policy in mnc's transfer price okay so for dividend policy and dividend capacity okay on dividend capacity there has been a calculation and on dividend policy there has been a discussion question both in the same year in september 2019 okay you need to discuss both as well as write okay on this topic what does this theory say this theory says that a firm should adopt a stable and a rising dividend payout ratio why because then it maintains confidence in the company if you are stable and dividend if you see is rising no one wants a dividend where it's going down a rising dividend payout ratio gives a confidence it maintains that confidence in the company that this company is a growing company right then uh, this is how it works okay dividend signaling if dividends are reduced this is considered as a bad news in the market okay so dividend through dividends you can signal right it works as a signal in the market how your company is doing so it works as a signal then if you change the policy okay any changes in policy may lead to shareholders having to sell to meet the liquidity requirements and incur transaction costs maybe you might have to sell the dividend okay investors may have chosen a particular company for tax planning purpose so you you cannot always say that because uh, dividend is stable and rising dividend you are going to invest in no sometimes it's because of the tax planning purpose also investors might choose and many investors have a preference for current income they want the dividend right <clears throat> now there are some practical influences on dividend policy that you need to know this will influence what your dividend policy will be number 1 you need to consider legal position okay number 2 level of profitability higher the profitability more dividend you can have inflation okay you have to see whether your dividend increase in your dividend is in line with the inflation or not growth control tax liquidity other sources of finance all this you need to consider before setting a dividend policy and before setting before setting dividend policy all this will limit your dividend capacity remember your dividend policy factor will limit your dividend capacity whether you are going to have a high dividend or lower dividend what is that capacity because in your exam you must have seen if you have done paper past paper they will tell you to calculate the dividend capacity and then you might have to comment on that okay so you can write this factor because ultimately dividend capacity will have an impact on the dividend policy so it's like it's like a cycle everything is linked to everything okay dividend capacity the ability at any given time of a firm to pay dividend to shareholders If I ask you what is the dividend capacity, what does it mean? It means that what is your capacity? How, uh, what is your capacity to pay dividend? If I ask you today, what is your capacity today to pay the dividends to the shareholder? Could be at any given amount of time. That is the meaning of dividend capacity. Okay. Legally, legally, the firm's dividend capacity is determined by the accumulated distributable profit. Let's say if you have ten thousand as an accumulated distributable profit. you can assume that that's your dividend capacity right but practically practically 
dividend capacity can be calculated as free cash flow to equity after reinvestment i repeat free cash flow to equity after reinvestment why did i repeat it because there are two terms if you know one is free cash flow or free cash flow to firm the other one is free cash flow to equity there are differences if it's a free cash flow or free cash flow to firm you cannot take it as a dividend capacity only it should have that word equity at the end that's how you remember free cash flow to equity equity dividend equity dividend right because equity holders only get dividends so free cash flow to equity will measure your dividend capacity in your exam if you are asked to calculate free sorry calculate dividend capacity indirectly what they are asking is free cash flow to equity and we know how to find free cash flow to equity i have explained to you this before haven't i that's the meaning we go by the practical meaning by the way okay dividend policy so these are some dividend policies which are there stable dividend policy we know it's stable does not keep going going up down at one level it is stable second constant payout ratio constant same payout ratio no matter what is the level of your profit zero dividend policy you don't pay dividend you reinvest everything you do not give anything as a dividend and fourth residual approach ratchet patterns script dividends okay remember all this have advantages and disadvantages which you need to know okay some might be more appropriate than others at different uh, life cycle every company has different life cycle maybe in the beginning something will be applicable maybe at the end something else will be applicable depends but most companies adopt the ratchet pattern this is a variant of a stable dividend policy you can say it's a stable dividend policy yeah okay what does it mean you are paying out a stable but rising dividend per share stable only but it's rising okay dividends lag earnings there is a difference between the earnings that you receive and the dividends lagging is there dividends may be maintained can be maintained when earnings fall okay that is what ratchet pattern means most of the time most companies now adopt this it's, it's, it's uh, popular avoid bad news signal why because with your earnings if you are maintaining that dividend or uh, rising dps is a good thing right it's a good signal avoids altering investors tax position okay now what is script dividend script dividends are like dividends in form of new shares please understand the meaning because in the exam they will not give you the meaning they will just give you script dividends and you have to know what to do with it script dividends allow shareholders to increase shareholding without paying any commission to the broker or stamp deed okay this helps company with liquidity because you don't have to pay anything as a commission and also tax paid is reduced now share buyback schemes a scheme through which you can buy back your shares okay but remember to do this it has to be allowed by the article of association you cannot do it according to your wish then it occurs when the company has no positive net present value when you have no not, uh, positive net present value projects left you go for the share buy back scheme this can be cosmetic exercise to increase share price yes cosmetic means it's not natural you are artificially you are increasing the share price by this exercise and this reduces cost of capital by increasing gearing how how tell me you need to do some numbers okay calculate and check this by yourself okay where you are buying back the shares okay gearing is increasing cost of capital is reduced you have to do it try it it's, it's like a challenge for you try it on your own and see how cost of capital reduces an alternative to a special one of dividend it's like a alternative right now it has some advantages it has some constraint you need to know advantages is is flexible flexible if excess cash flows are thought to be temporary increase earnings per share eps it adjusts equity base to a most suitable level it buy out 
dissident shareholders creates a market for shares reduction in cost of capital reduces likelihood of a takeover gives shareholders a choice hold or sell you see and it saves transaction cost constraints are price can be too high you need the shareholders approval shareholders might not like it uh it might reduce future dividend capacity it could be seen as a failure shareholders might not be happy okay now dividend policy in mnss see when there is a the general dividend policy considerations okay needs to be borne in mind earlier we went no cost control all these things needs to be borne by mnss also same but mnss have some additional factors that they need to consider like they need to see consider dividends between the group companies as well as to the external shareholders obviously it might not be same okay and many of the external shareholders may be institutions that require stability in dividend flows when considering dividend capacity we are talking about dividend capacity remittance blocking can limit funds remember if you are not allowed to remit back what you have earned in the subsidiary overseas to the parent company if it's blocked it will limit the fund right that you can pay as a dividend to the parent company so this needs to be considered more are there liquidity is there liquidity is one of the factor all of the following can have an impact on the free cash flow equity hence liquidity like this this are those things intra group dividends right transfer pricing timing of central remittances reinvestment policy tax regime reorganizations okay then despite the financial sense okay of a residual approach to dividends most mnss adopt ratchet up pattern of dividends we have earlier went through that ratchet approach right so methods adopted to prevent the effect of block remittances are this transfer pricing you can set a price in such a way okay where you can remit okay the first that were earlier blocked now you can remit it back through transfer price inter group lending you can lend each other through which you can remit at least reduce the effect of that uh, blocked remittance up to some level royalty and patent payments can be given management fees you can charge for the fees parallel loans you can take a loan parallelly in that currency so the host government may try and prevent many of this remember even if you try to do this to minimize the effect of block remittances either through parallel loan transfer pricing but the host country's government will try to prevent that also okay now what you need to know is the terms the gross free cash flow to equity what does it mean it's equal to operating cash flow plus dividend from subsidiaries minus net interest paid and tax remember and net free cash flow to equity is what do you get from your gross free cash flow to equity deduct your capital expenditure add acquisition deduct add or deduct acquisition and disposal any new capital issue deduct okay so this net free cash flow to equity takes account of the capital reinvestment okay which is then necessary to determine your dividend capacity okay so if you want to find your dividend capacity it is through net free cash flow to equity only and tax regime can affect the attractiveness of host countries remember if you have to choose a country most of the time you will choose based on the tax is it a high tax rate country or the tax rate is low because that will affect your attractiveness right if it's low tax you will be attracted otherwise no so attract the effectiveness of the host countries and also the way in which funds are re repatriated if you are allowed to remit back entirely that you have earned in the host country you will be more attracted towards that country if you are blocked from remitting it back you will not be attracted okay now we come to transfer pricing transfer pricing can be asked from an ethical point of view also one ethical question is always asked in acca p levels 
whether it is SBR, SBL, AFM, triple A, anything, any paper. So AFM also will have one ethical question. Now I don't know it is asked for how many marks, but it will be asked. You can be damn sure about it. And most of the time transfer pricing is asked as a part of an ethical question because it's unethical to charge too high a price or reduce your price too low to benefit. You're taking the advantage of tax only basically, right? So what is transfer pricing? Again, I will repeat. Transfer pricing is a price that is charged by one part of the organization when supplying goods and services to, to another part. Then the same organization. It's like a parent and a subsidiary. Okay. A good transfer pricing system we should have these things. Number one, it should maintain the divisional autonomy. Every division should be free to take their own decision. Meant this transfer pricing, a good transfer pricing will maintain that. Second, it motivates managers. Third, it helps to assess the performance objectively. Goal is aligned, simple to operate, understandable, and it is flexible. Okay? If these things are missing, it's not a good transfer pricing system. Hence, you can say Garmin might come and intervene. Now, multinational aspect. Okay lower tax duties and tariffs they will always go for lower tax duties okay they will set a transfer price in such a way that they want the lower tax duties and tariffs they can rapid uh, repatriate the money for an exchange exposure competitive position host garment relationship all this matter when you're setting a transfer pricing this matters how your relationship is with the host government and finally ethical issue why because it is a social responsibility and acting as a, reason, a reasonable citizen needs to be considered when setting a transfer price when you're setting a transfer price you have to operate as a reasonable sorry responsible citizen okay because if you do not if you do not it will lead to bad publicity and hence loss of reputation if you're setting a transfer price unreasonably very high and low it will affect your reputation okay Hence, you need to be very careful. So that's it for this. Uh, next lecture, the most important, 110% that you are getting. And also, everyone loves also this topic. That's VAC. Okay. So thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And please, please, please. It's my humble request. Do share this content, the channel with your friends. If they are not aware of this channel by now. Okay. And... These do help me to, uh, you know, spread this knowledge and be a part of a good work by helping as many ACC students to become an affiliate and then member as possible. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.